Hello and welcome to part three of the video series Deep Learning with Apache MaxNet. Uh, in, in previous part we discussed, we actually built a plain neural network to classify hand uh, written digit, uh, digits um, data set, MNIST data set. Um, in this particular video, we are going to basically, in this particular part of the video series, we are basically going to um, write a convolutional neural network for the same kind of problem. And the reason is uh, the convolutional neural networks, they are actually much better when, uh, when, it terms to, when it comes to processing images and classifying images. So, and again, the purpose of this part uh, of the video is not to build a best classifier for MNIST hand uh, recognition data set, rather to come up with um, the building blocks of MaxNet, how you, can, how, how you can implement a convolutional neural network in MaxNet. So the purpose is to focus on MaxNet uh, modules, MaxNet implementations rather than, rather than the accuracy of the classifier. And, uh, and to keep this particular part of the video completely independent from the previous videos, I'll be recording a lot of, uh, lot of stuff that we, that we did in the previous video so that if, uh, if you just see uh, this particular video on its own, it looks like that. It, it, it actually does not refer to any code blocks in, from the previous videos or parts. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook and actually uh, import certain packages that we need. Uh, so import um, let's say numpy as np import um, max net as max from max net uh, import uh, glue on import nd import uh, auto grade that we need from uh, max net dot glue on import uh, neural network. So these are the imports that we need. Um, and then we actually um, download uh, the fashion MNIST data set. So let's say the uh, training data. Um, let's write a function to transform the data. So let's define f transform that actually transform the data to in the form that is required by the MaxNet. Basically, MaxNet requires data in the form that you first have number of channels and then you have dimensions of the images. So for that, what we do is we write nd, the nd array, uh, move axis function that moves the axis uh, from the axis two to zero, which means the channels now appear at the very beginning. Then we have as type, we convert the integer values to float 32 and then we rescale all these values uh, so that they appear between zero and one. And we return that data. So that's our function. Now we load the data, let's say training data, as max.glueon, um, max.glueon dot data uh, dot vision dot uh, mnist. And here we have train variable as true. And we also transform this from the function transform first. And we call in transform first our, the name of the function that we just wrote. So the handle of the function, so f transform. So that's for the training data. Uh, a similar function exists, uh, can be written for the validation data. The only thing that we have to change is to convert this train variable from true to false. So yeah, so convert that train as false and these things will be now as a validation data. Um, so yeah, it's done. Now we have our data. Um, next, let's convert the uh, data loader, the batch sizes, batch size, let me convert batch size as let's say, let's say 50. That's our batch size. Let's build the iterator. Uh, training data loader that is our iterator max dot glue on dot data dot data loader and here we actually give the training data which is TD uh, do we need to shuffle this let's say yes 
and what is the uh, batch size that is equal to batch size and similarly build a training loader build a, an iterator or loader for validation data using the built-in value built, uh, using the data loader <coughs> so let's say we have validation loader as this and here we have validation data so yeah all set so next and now next uh, we can define our model for example model is um, let's say nn dot sequential maybe or hybrid sequential either way so then we have uh, this we can we can write this a uh, name scope model dot name scope and within this scope uh, we can add uh, different layers of convolutional neural network so let's say model dot add and now we have uh, we have to add these layers so let's uh, by the way here we need not to flatten the images because uh, if we if you if you're working with a plain model we need to flatten the images but in convolutional neural networks the images are fed the same way and we already have converted the images in a format the batches in a format that are required by by the maxnet layers so that's nn.conf2d and here we have to specify the channels so let's say the number of channels for the very first uh, layer let's say 32 channels uh, kernel size kernel size um, what are the kernels here let's say the kernel size is 5 by 5 and then we have to set the activation uh, let's say activation is uh, rel let's say so that's our first uh, convolutional layer uh, where we have 32 channels we have no stride at all and uh, we have 5 by 5 uh, filters 32 of those then uh, next we can have a pooling layer uh, for example max uh, pool 2d max pool 2d and here we have to define the window size which is the pool size pool size uh, as uh, tuple 2 by 2 um, we can set the strides if we want for example the stride um, strides is uh, in both of the in both the directions let's say 2 by 2 so that's our max pool layer we can also if we really want we can add a dropout layer if we if we for example want to add a add a dropout so for example nn dot um, um, nn dot um, dropout so after pool let's say we want a dropout of 0 0.3 let's say that's a dropout layer added uh, just for regularization if you really want that and we can then have uh, more convolutional layers and max poolings and dropouts I mean the combinations if you really want so let's have more layers here we have this let's say now uh, the number of channels are let's say 64 and we again have 5 by 5 and relu let's say that's uh, this and let's say there is no dropout after the second layer let's just uh, think about that and uh, we may have a couple of more layers if we really want uh, then after that we actually flatten uh, flatten our input to build a fully connected layer and let's add a layer fully connected layer dense let's say we have 128 units in that and let's say the activations is uh, relu again and let's now add the final layer dense the final layer with 10 units and the activation there is no activation because we will be applying um, uh, we will be finally applying a loss function that will be including that will include actually uh, the the activation as softmax so that's our model if there is no problem uh, the model should be there so it's there after that we actually have to define our trainer and um, uh, we actually have to define the loss function and trainer and metric so let's define those um, we have several choices here let's define a trainer or a compiler trainer as 
glue on dot trainer and here we have let's say um, params parameters as model dot uh, collect params and then we have uh, optimizer optimizer we have several choices for optimizer let's use uh, stochastic gradient descent um, again we have several choices here and optimizer par parameters params uh, we again have several choices here several optimization uh, optimizing uh, optimizer parameters but let's just use the learning rate uh, and let's just set this learning rate to be 0 0.01. We can have other parameters as well, but let's just update this one and stay the default, stay with the default values with the rest of those. Um, oh, we have to we have to initialize the convolutional bias as well. So learning rate and um, the trainer. So we we basically have to set the uh, these kind of convolutional biases and for that we actually oh we, we have to basically we, we first have to initialize our parameters and then we have to to set the then we have to call this trainer so let's initialize our our parameter so let me just make a cell above and initialize our parameters so for example model dot uh, initialize and because once we initialize all our parameters then this model dot collect parameters can only work so let's initialize the parameters as max dot init dot Xavier there are several choices here we can initialize the parameters in several ways uh, now everything is fine we first have to initialize the parameters then the trainer will work and after the trainer we actually have to um, we actually have to set the um, loss function as well as the accuracy so um, let's uh, let's actually set the uh, loss function and and metric so the metric we are going to set is accuracy from mx dot metric dot accuracy let's say that's our metric and we set that and the loss function we are going to use is let's say the softmax cross entropy so loss function is um, again the uh, uh, softmax cross entropy from uh, glue on so let's use that so that is mx dot um, glue on dot loss dot soft max cross entropy loss um, so that's our let's say that's our loss function so uh, having all set now trainer and all these things uh, loss function matrix we are now ready to actually train our classifier train our model so let's say number of epochs so e number of epochs let's say five uh, for each epoch in range of epochs and for each x y the batches in the training loader what we really do is x is x uh, as in context uh, context and the context we are defining here is actually mx dot um, CPU let's say that's our context um, or maybe we can define that context here on on here let's say CTX CTX as MX dot CPU zero that's our context let's say um, if you're working with GPU then we can define that as GPU so CTX context similarly Y as Y dot as in context so where we are actually sending these because in terms of GPUs we have to send these uh, batches maybe in parallel mode to several uh, GPUs now after that we actually are going to define the we are going to record the for bus uh, with autograde dot record 
so with auto grade dot record so with this particular scope we are actually y hat is model into x that's our y hat and our loss is basically um, loss function loss function that receives y hat and the actual labels y so that's our loss so in the forward pass we are actually recording these uh, computations because uh, we will be needing those computations in the in the backward pass and now the backward pass basically uh, will be run using the backward function that's the back propagation backward pass and then we update our metric update and we give um, this as um, the true labels y and what the model actually predicts so after that um, after after setting the uh, metric now we are ready to update the parameters using the trainer update the parameter based on the based on the this particular batch the trainer dot update a uh, trainer dot step trainer dot step and here we have to basically give the batch size and batch let's say batch size is x dot shape zero that's a, this is the batch size so after that uh, the first um, actually the first batch is gone then the second batch is gone and the first epoch is over after the first epoch we actually collect the metric metric dot get and we actually print the training accuracy and uh, after this particular epoch we we reset our metric so that's it that's the training wrapper and if we run this after each epoch it will basically print the training accuracy so let's run it if there are no errors it will actually print certain accuracies for each epoch remember our model has uh, 32 channels first convolutional layer then we have a max pool layer then we have a dropout then we have another convolutional layer then we have to flatten out then we have a fully connected layer so this is our model um, let's see what it brings uh, after the first epoch then after the second epoch then after the third epoch and so on so let's see the results here so this is the accuracy for after the first epoch now the second epoch is going on um, on my machine so um, yeah so this is the accuracy uh, after first epoch the accuracy uh, training accuracy the accuracy uh, after second op epoch will be a little larger and and so on so we have just set five epochs so let's see all the accuracies one by one so these are the accuracies of different epochs so epoch one epoch two epoch three epoch four and epoch five so that's the accuracy on the training set um, let's let's now compute the accuracy on the validation set so let's say metric is uh, mx dot metric dot accuracy um, and let's say for x validation and y validation in in range um, validation validation loader um, let's say x xv is xv as in context ctx uh, similarly yv as yv as in context ctx and now what we do is we actually update our metric with respect to the original labels xv and the output of the model so model on xv so that's it and then we can just print the um, name and accuracy metric dot get and we can just print the accuracy on the validation set so data loader object cannot be interpreted as integer uh, maybe i have done something wrong vl maybe i have used um, um, validation loader that's a validation loader so what's the problem 
we have this uh, x v y v in range um, in no 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 not in range oh that's bad it is in inside the validation loader the range function is where this range function comes from okay so now we'll be having the accuracy on uh, the validation set so uh, let's wait for it because it has a lot of badges as well um, it will give us accuracy but right now it is not so 97 percent so the training accuracy is 97 percent the validation accuracy is 97 percent so we are cool here so the purpose of this video uh, this part actually it was to introduce you with the maxnet and its different components to actually build a convolutional neural network Obviously, to actually uh, learn more about MaxNet, you should go to the homepage, MaxNet homepage. There is a book also by Alex Samola, who is the director of AWS right now. And he has a complete book on uh, deep learning, very comprehensive book. It's open, it's available, and it is written in MaxNet uh, for much more reference. So hope you like our video. Uh, please press the like button, subscribe our channel, and share this with uh, your fellows, um, and hope to see you next time.